that hose, squeeze that water, is what begins to happen. The flow of water begins to trickle down, right? The harder you squeeze on that hose, the less that water flows. And until you finally, you kind of crank that hose up and it completely shuts off the flow of that water, right? Here's what I know, the spirit of the living God, if you've been born again, it lives inside of us. It's like rivers of living water that are bringing life to us. But when we take our eyes off of Jesus, it's like we begin to squeeze onto that water hose. If we have bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, we begin to try to rely on our own strength. We begin to say, God, I don't, not, we might not say this with our mouth, but with our lives and with our actions, what we begin to say is, God, I really don't need your strength. I'm going to do it in my own strength. Yeah. We begin to say, God, I don't really need to seek you in prayer and your wisdom, even though you know everything. No, really, I know everything. I know what's best, and I'm going to do this in my own kind of wisdom. We begin to act in this way that we're dependent upon ourselves instead of being dependent upon God. And when we do that, man, it begins to choke out the life, like, like squeezing the water was there, shutting off that flow of water. It begins to squeeze. And tonight what we need, people, is just to lift our eyes up to Jesus and see him sitting on the throne. Amen? Amen. Amen. Here's what I know. It says, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. The train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings with two. He covered his face with two of his feet and two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And here's what I want to say. There's a lot of things that were just said there about angels with six wings. Let me tell you now, if that's what we're focused on, we're missing the point here. It's not about the angels with the odd descriptions. I know we kind of see them with two wings. Right here, they got six. It's kind of a weird thing for us to kind of picture in our head. I know that. But let's go ahead and skip over that because here's the important part. What they saw was the Lord sitting on the throne, and he is so glorious and so wonderful and so full of power that they had to cover their eyes. Before. These things that if they were here today, we would probably either be run scared or fall down and go, like, what in the world are you? If, if one of them suckers just stood right here on this stage, we wouldn't know what to do with it. Yet when they saw God in all of his glory, they shielded their eyes, they covered their feet, and they just began to cry, holy, holy, My God. holy is the Lord of hosts. And here's what I want to bring up tonight. I want to ask you, have you ever had an encounter with God, a true encounter? Have you ever seen God sitting on his throne? Have you ever seen God in all of his glory and splendor and authority there in heaven? Because this is what I know. At 21 years of age, as I was doing everything I thought I had life, if you ask anybody about my childhood and my teenage years, I know they might have been a little rough parents. But I don't know this. If you ask most people, they would say something along the lines of, I was a good kid. I think I was a pretty moral person. I know I made mistakes like every kid does, but if you ask most people, they would say I was a good I was, so, I was a good kid or I was a good upstanding student and all these things. But here's what I know. At 21 years of age, as I was in my car driving to go visit my grandmother and grandfather over in East Texas, right out here on I-20, as I was about right here about 4 in the afternoon on Easter Sunday, 2011, I caught a vision of God sitting on the throne. And just like Isaiah, I cried out, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips because here's what I know. God is holy. Amen. Yes. And when you have a vision of God, there is nothing but one word that comes out of your mouth, and that is holy. And it's not just here in Isaiah, it is throughout the Bible. Yes. When people encounter God, they cry out, holy, holy, holy. Yeah. Because God is holy. Come on. Because God is holy. And here's the problem. At 21 years of age, I found out I was not. No matter how good of a person I thought I was. No matter how much I tried to hold on and be God of my life, I found out very quickly it drove me straight into the ground because I was not strong enough. I was not good enough. I wasn't smart enough. No matter how high I scored on ACT or have a GPA, none of that mattered. I could not get a hold of life. Yeah. It would drive you into the ground. At that moment, listen, I needed something. I had a problem. I had a problem. It's called sin. It's a problem that every single one of us faces. It's the problem that Isaiah felt right here when he saw God in all of his holiness and all of his glory and all of his splendor. He found out real quick, 
woe is me. I am undone. That's what he's saying. I'm bursting at the seams. I'm about to die right here because I have seen the Lord of hosts, and he is holy. He is perfect. He is righteous. He is without spot, without blemish. He is perfect in every single way, and I am a mess full of sin. Yeah. Not only am I full of sin, but I'm a part of a whole generation of absolute wickedness, and we're all done for here. There you go. So how can a holy God allow something as sinful as me to continue to exist? And you know what? The truth is, it would be absolutely just for God to get rid of that evil. It would. Yeah. It would. Because he's holy. He said, I'm perfect. And only perfection is coming here into heaven. But that's not the response we get. In fact, this is a great picture. What we see is one of the angels goes and grabs a coal from the altar of heaven and brings and touches Isaiah's lips and he says, you've been made clean. Your sins have been atoned for. Now here's what I'm going to say to you tonight. I can say with pretty confidence, not 100%, but 99% certainty, I don't think a six-winged angel is going to appear to you tonight and bring the coal from the altar of heaven and touch it to your lips. Don't think that's going to happen tonight. There's that 1% chance he's God, not me. I don't know. But here's what I do know. That about 2,000 years ago, God, in his unbelievable love and grace, stepped down the starry stairway of heaven and walked the dusty trails of this earth that he created. He wrapped himself in humanity, setting aside all the glory and splendor of heaven because his love and grace for us was so much that he said, I'm not going to leave them there in their sinful state. I know they can't see me in their sin. They can't have this. They, they, they can't come to me. They can't have this perfect right relation with me because their sin is too much. And so I'm going to come do it for them. I'm going to come fix this problem problem for them because they can't. And Jesus came down and he died on the cross for our sins so that, listen, we could be made right with him, so that our sins could be atoned for, so that we could have a vision of God sitting in his glory. And not only that, not only do we get a taste of it here in this life, but one day when we pass from this life or he comes again, we get to stand before that throne of God and see him in his glory uninhibited by the sin of this world. Hallelujah. It is a joy that is beyond anything we will ever experience in this life. It is a peace that surpasses all understanding. We get a taste of it in this life, but the thing to come is so much better. It's like when you know you got somebody frying up some good catfish out in the barn back behind their house, and you get a waft of that smell that hits your nose, and you know there's a delicious meal about to happen. Ah. Listen, that's kind of what these experiences are on this side of heaven. They're, they're like smelling that sweet, good food that's coming around the corner. And one day we're going to have that meal in heaven. Amen? Amen. So here's what I'm going to say to you. I'm already up. i got so much more I want to say to you. Man, God is good. Man, God is good. But here's what I want to say to you tonight. For the saints that are here tonight, look at Jesus. He's sitting on his throne. He's already beaten death. He's beaten hell. He's beaten the grave. He's risen in power. He has all authority, all power. His kingdom is from everlasting to everlasting, from generation to generation. He knows it all. He made it all. It was by him, for him, through him, in him. He holds it all in existence by yeah. the word and his power by the grace. Look to him. Look to him. Yeah. He knows how to handle it. Hallelujah. He knows how to fix it. Look to him tonight. Come on, Let's come on. Let's our heart and mind and focus and priority and life and set it upon Jesus. And for all those that tonight, listen, I know you're here and you've heard that Jesus loves you. You've heard it your whole life growing up in the South that Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. You've heard Amazing Grace so many times. Man, we could all stand and sing it without words on the screen or anything. But you've never really experienced God's love in your life. You've never really experienced the grace of God in your life. You hear people tell you that Jesus loves you. You hear people sing Amazing Grace. You believe it to be true, sort of. That you've never really had that reality in your life. Listen, I want to start right here. I think we have so, sometimes we have downgraded sin so much, we've made it almost like a small little anthill in a front yard that it's no big deal, it's no problem. But I'm here to tell you tonight, if you've never experienced the grace of God, you've never experienced the love of God that has changed and transformed your life, I want you to know it's not a little anthill in a front yard. It's a mountain in front of you that you cannot climb. And the weight of it will break you. And there's a holy God in heaven who will not let sin pass. And I know he won't let sin pass because he poured out his wrath on his own son on the cross 2,000 years ago. That's how serious he takes it.
And listen to me. Once we see the vision you need tonight is not only Jesus sitting on the throne, you need to see Jesus hanging on the cross for your sin. Because mm. that is when you know his love is real. You want to experience his love? I know people have told you that, and you go, yeah, but I don't really feel love by Jesus. Here's the picture you need tonight. You need to see Jesus hanging with that th uh, crown of thorns on his head, missing most of his skin and beard and broken bone, or and beaten to a pulp and skin torn off, because that's how much he does love you. When you see that, you understand that sin <laughs> is not some trivial little thing, but it's something God takes really serious and is big, then you'll understand. You'll never sing Amazing Grace with a dry eye ever again. Yeah. That's how amazing His grace is. Yes. We cheapen His grace by making sin small. Let's let's remember that grace is an amazing thing. It's something beyond words. Bro. Yeah. And here's what I'm saying to you tonight, because I know there's people here tonight. You've heard Jesus love you. You've heard about Him. You know He died on the cross, but you've never really given your life to Him tonight. And here's what I just want to say: Come home tonight to Jesus. He sits on the throne. You're not going to outlast him. You're not going to outsmart him. You're not going to outstrong him. You're not going to be able to. He is the great one. He is the greatest one. There is nothing that compares to him. He has all glory, all authority, all power. He sits on heaven and he all on the throne of heaven. He always has. And tonight he's inviting you to come be a part of the family. Quit being a rebel. Quit being an enemy who's trying to fight against him. And come be a part of the family. He'll make you a child, adopted son and daughter of the Most High God, an heir and co-heir of heaven with Jesus Christ. And that's the offer. He's calling out to you tonight. Saying, give your life to Jesus. Quit fighting so hard in life. Quit fighting against him so much. Quit being so prideful. Yeah. Let's humble ourselves tonight. Call out to Jesus and come to save you. Tonight, experience the love that so many people around you sing about. Experience the grace tonight that so many around you sing about. Come be a part of the thing tonight. Let's do this. Let's bow our heads tonight. I want to pray for everybody here tonight. I want to pray for all of us. But tonight, I know there's people right now, you've tried so hard to say, Jesus, Michael, I know I sinned. I know I've done wrong. I know I still do wrong, but I've tried so many times to stop. James Michael, I've promised myself time and time again, day after day, that I'm going to quit, that I'm going to stop doing this, and I'm going to stop being this way. And every day, I really mean it, James Michael. I mean it every single day. But every single day, I get up, and I keep falling, and I keep messing up, and I can't seem to beat my problems. I want you to know you don't need your power. You need the power of God in your life tonight. He'll set you free tonight. He'll change your life tonight. I don't care what the problem is. He's delivered me from sin. He can deliver you from sin tonight. Tonight, I'm asking you just to call out to him and say, Lord, set me free. Some of you, you've made promises to people in your family that you're going to quit. That you're going to stop being that way. You're going to try. And you do. You really mean it. Every time you say that to your wife, every time you say that to husband, you mean it this time. And I really mean it. I'm going to stop. And you just can't seem to stop. You need Jesus to change your life tonight. I'm going to ask you if you've never really been born again, if you've never given your life to Jesus, you believe it's all true, but you've never surrendered to Him. You've never really done this right here, repented of your sins. You're not, you've never really been, maybe you're sorry because you know it's wrong, but you've never really had any intention to turn away from your sin. But tonight, the Holy Spirit is tugging on your heart, telling you to come tonight. He's telling you He can set you free tonight, and He'll change your life tonight that tonight you need to actually call out to God, ask Him to save you, help, ask Him to help you turn away from your sin. You need to do that tonight. Don't say no to God tonight. If you've never given your life to Jesus, I'm going to ask you real quick, if you just raise your hand. For us, I'm going to pray for you tonight. I'm not going to call you out, make you come up front, but you'll just raise your hand tonight saying, Jesus, Michael, I want to give my life to Jesus. So I'm going to pray for you tonight. this week as we go on, God, that we would fix our eyes on you, God, that your glory would overtake us. Your holiness would, would just consume our mind and hearts, God, that you would grab every bit of our attention and affection, God, and that we would learn to lean on you, to trust in you, God, that all of our 
uh, we would trust in your strength, trust in your wisdom, God, trust in your glory, that we would do everything to serve you. God, I pray that you give us a clear vision of who you are on your throne in complete control. Nothing catches you off guard. Nothing catches you. Uh, you know everything before it happens, God. Nothing surprises you. Nothing comes against you that you have not already overcome by the blood of the Lamb. God, I know you stand in victory tonight. And I pray that we will begin to experience these things in our lives. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank you for that word tonight. Let's give him a hand tonight. Hallelujah.